very pleasure to present my work, Closed Loop Network Automation for Optimal Intel RDT Allocation via the Reinforcement Learning. So I'm uh, from Intel Labs, and uh, I primarily focus on research on computer architecture, dynamic resource allocation, especially using machine learning approach. So many people contributed to our work. We have Yi Peng Wang, Ren Wang, Charlie Tai, and Andrew Hurwich from Intel Labs. And we also have Tong Zhang and uh, Zhu Zhou from the Intel Data Center Group. So this is the agenda of my talk. I will first talk introduce the Intel resource director technologies, and then I'll talk about how we build a closed loop network automation for Intel RDT technology for using reinforcement learning approach. And I'll also show our research proof of concept. So here is the introduction. So network function virtualization has uh, uh, technology has uh, attracted uh, tremendous interest uh, from telecommunication industry as well as data centers uh, because they can assign shared resources uh, for virtual network functions on demand. In order to further improve server utilizations, uh, service provider can also deploy best effort workload whenever the detected high priority WinF workloads resource utilization is low. However, when we running high priority WinF workloads and the best effort workloads, they cause contention in the shared resources on the platform, and this can in turn affect the performance for high priority applications. In order to alleviate the shared resource contention problem um, on the platform, Intel provides this resource director technology, also known as Intel RDT, that uh, help to control the shared to control over how shared resources, such, such as the last level cache, the memory bandwidth, uh, are shared, uh, are used by applications, virtual machines, and the containers. There are three major components in Intel RDT technology. The first one is resource monitoring, which allows software to monitor the shared resource usage by each application. And the, the next one is the RDT exposure. The, the, like the shared resource utilization actually can be exposed by, to the software, and the software can directly manage and control on the, those shared resources. The, um, and the third one actually is the resource enforcement. The real res shared resource allocation is being controlled in the hardware, such as we have the cache allocation, cache occupancy allocation, and the memory bandwidth allocation. So the, the customer can use the monitoring to help deploy jobs placement in the scheduler, as well as uh, um, build dynamic loop control. For the, um, con for the dynamic control, we, the settings can be updated at runtime and at any time. So this allows the advanced, advanced usage such, such as dynamic closed loop control. So here I'm showing some uh, feature of the RDT technologies uh, which include the monitoring and the uh, allocation. For the monitoring technology, we, we have the cache monitoring technology which is codenamed the CMT, which has the per threshold the last level cache occupancy allocation, uh, um, monitoring, sorry. And we also have the memory bandwidth monitoring, which we periodically manage how much bandwidth is utilized by each thread. On the, on the allocation side, we have uh, CAT, which is the cache allocation technology, and the MBA, which is memory bandwidth allocation. So Intel RDT actually provides new visibility and the capability to control over how shared resources are being utilized by like each application or on a per thread basis. So how can RDT be used in the network domain? As we know, NFE enables service providers to consolidate network functions on shared servers. 
To further improve uh, uh, total cost of ownership, TCO, service providers would like to deploy some best effort workloads uh, alongside on the same server as the high priority win as uh, this can help further improve the server utilization and reduce the TCO cost. And in order to manage the resource contention between the shared, uh, between uh, high priority VNFs and the best effort workloads, uh, they can enforce, use Intel RDT technology to enforce a high degree of performance isolation between multiple applications running simultaneously on the platform based on their perennial, uh, Priorities. So this figure shows that we can run high priority VNF, and the customer can also deploy best effort tasks. And uh, in order to uh, provide the performance isolation, they can allocate certain dedicated uh, cache uh, cache weights uh, to the high priority workload and separate on the high priority and the best um, best effort workload. So. To decide how many, like uh, how to decide the RDT allocation beside, between the high priority and the best effort workloads. Uh, so some like service providers, they run the high priority NFWs offline, and they do like a manually configuration that they find the RDT configuration that can satisfy their service level agreement for the worst case. And then, as this figure shows, that right, they run those and they they reserve certain uh, amount of RDT results for high priority VNFs, and uh, they then allocate the remaining remaining RDT results for the best effort workloads. So this is categorized as the static results allocation. So since network traffic actually exhibits the daily busy and the idle scenarios, we know all know that in the evening. The traffic load is low, and when like when morning got started, traffic started going up and then going down. They have this like 24-hour day and night traffic patterns. So service providers can sometimes they also operate based on the daytime um, period. During the nighttime, they can allocate uh, less results for high priority VNFs because the traffic demand is low, and during the daytime, they allocate uh, more for the high priority VNFs. But this is still like uh, uh, targeting the worst case during the daytime and the nighttime, and this is still like a static allocation. So both of these approaches actually pro protect the high priority VNFs uh, uh, performance. However, they lose the opportunity to further improve the server utilizations. So how can we do better? Um, dynamic RDT allocation um, becomes attractive in the NFV-based network operations. Um, so as this figure shows that if we can actually dynamically uh, allocate the unused RDT results from high, priori from high priority applications and giving those applications to best effort workloads, we can actually help improving the server utilization and the redu uh, help reduce the TCO cost. And uh, one key challenge in the dynamic RDT allocation is actually how to decide, especially dynamically decide the RDT resource allocation between the high priority VNFs and the best effort workloads that can satisfy the performance service level agreement for the high priority application well, like a, can, uh, a dynamically uh, allocate unused results uh, for the lower priority best effort workloads. So in our work, we propose uh, a closed loop automation framework to dynamically control the RDT results allocation between high priority and best effort workload using reinforcement learning approach. So reinforcement learning approach is a very important uh, branch from the machine learning, where the agent learns uh, to take actions that actually can achieve high reward through interacting with the environment. So different from supervised learning, reinforcement learning actually um, um, does not learn from the sample data provided by external experienced supervisor. Instead, it learns by its own experience uh, 
by interacting with the environment. Despite there is a lot of uncertainties from the, um, from the environment. Um, so reinforcement learning actually is a very powerful method that can tackle pro like complex problem that approaches a lot of real world complexity. In our work, we use the reinforcement learning methodology to learn and uh, build dynamic uh, RDT allocation policies uh, that uh, can dynamically reallocate between high priority and the best effort workload uh, in the aim of uh, like, uh, um, keeping the perform maintaining the performance for high priority VNFs and uh, um, improving the server utilizations and reduce the TCO cost. So next, I'll introduce our closed loop network automation for the Intel RDT allocation via the reinforcement learning approach. So this is our closed loop automation system for, to dynamically control the RDT results allocation between high priority VNFs and the best effort workloads. So, um, we actually are uh, using the machine learning, using especially the reinforcement learning approach. There are multiple applications uh, running on the platform. Some are high priority, latency sensitive, and um, customer facing like uh, workloads. For example, some packet processing. And there are also best effort workloads that uh, to utilize any, um, un any unused results uh, to improve the server utilization. And we run those uh, workloads simultaneously on the platform. And we have a telemetry collection um, that periodically collect the, um, the, the platform status, uh, such as application telemetry and also platform telemetry, et cetera. And those of telemetry can be fed into the monitoring and the storage uh, um, tools. The monitoring tool, uh, like the metrics, can be visualized through the monitoring tool as Sun Ku previously gave some uh, demo and uh, um, e example about uh, how this works, right? Actually, we utilize those tools to build a reinforcement learning model. The storage, to, uh, the telemetry data are also being stored in the storage. And all telemetry data are actually fed into the analytics agent. And uh, here, uh, to, to, to make decisions about the RDT allocation at runtime. And uh, in our research work, we use reinforcement learning to learn and uh, making decisions and control the sh shared software, R uh, to control the shared RDT resource allocations. Our goal is we want to maintain the performance for high priority VNFs while dynamically uh, reallocate the RDT at the runtime. So, so how does reinforcement learning work? So here I'm giving an example. Um, there are two major components. One is the agent, and the other is the environment in the reinforcement learning system. The agent here is our like dynamic RDT controller or hardware resource controller. And the environment here is the server platform. The agent uh, issues an action to the environment uh, here, the action can be our like uh, hardware resource allocation knobs. For example, the RDT uh, resource allocation control knobs. And uh, after um, each new action, uh, some new state and the reward is being obtained from the environment, from our server platforms. The state here can be like the incoming network traffic rate, uh, the current uh, resource utilization on the platform, the performance of the application, and the reward up here actually reflects our goals. In the NFV uh, scenario, the, the goals can be either improved, like a packet processing throughput, uh, improved hardware utilization, energy efficiency. So there are multiple like goals that the users can define. And uh, this is state and the reward, uh, especially the reward part, are used uh, to feed back to the agent to help improve the policy of the agent. So reinforcement learning by trial and error is con continuously interacting with the, with the system and granularly learns what's the maximal policy based on the current states of the, of the workload running on the platform.
So um, here are some like uh, um, more detailed analysis on how we build the reinforcement learning algorithm. So one key challenge in building um, like a powerful and uh, to make reinforcement learning algorithm works well in the problem is the first one is how do we decide uh, algorithm, reinforcement learning algorithm that works best in this particular problems. And the second consideration is uh, um, how do we define the states that can help making the decisions. And the third one is how do we define the reward that can actually um, reflect the goals uh, the customer want to achieve. So um, in selecting the reinforcement learning algorithm, there are several aspects. Um, so the major consideration is sample efficiency. That is how many samples you need to do by trial and error before you get convergence. And the other one is the stability. How can you maintain the stability of your, uh, the model you trained? So um, deep reinforcement learning has been, gaining, uh, wide, has been widely used in the computer games, um, like uh, Atari games. And also it has been, because of its, uh, um, it's using the deep neural networks to, to learn the, the policy, the function. So it has been very powerful to solve some complex problems. In our research work, we start by using the deep Q network um, algorithm in the reinforcement learning from the in reinforcement learning algorithm um, categories. The primary um, advantage of uh, this DQ network because it can learn the function that estimates long-term reward from taking an action. So um, it's very sample efficient. Uh, and also it provides the states in a continuous space, which fits well, very well in our problems. However, we found that there is some limitations in this algorithm. Uh, first of all, it ha can overestimate their Q functions, and also they have, we, we observe oscillations in the training side. And uh, um, during double DQN, um, DDDQN actually improves uh, from the DQN algorithm. By doubling the network to overestimate, uh, uh, to, uh, to mitigate the overestimation of Q value function, that's the first one. Also, they separate the um, state value and action value so that to um, provide a higher stability in the learning process. So, in our study, uh, actually, we deployed a, a DDDQN network and uh, to solve the, to help uh, learn train and uh, learn the policies for our dynamic RDT allocation. So, um, here, our, this figure shows our detailed uh, closed, uh, closed automation framework for our dynamic RDT allocations. So as I explained previously, we try different algorithms, and um, uh, for, this, for this particular uh, problem, we find the DDDQN algorithm works well in this particular space. And uh, the, the box on the left, we can see is uh, dy our dynamic resource controller, that which the, the fundamental engine is the reinforcement learning agent. And um, um, the, the agent issues action to the environment. Uh, here, uh, in the action here is uh, the RDT last level cache allocation between the high priority mean F and the best effort uh, uh, workloads. So the agent issues the action to the environment, and we, as we can see, we run the high priority and the best effort workload on the platform. So our system periodically manages the state. The state here is our incoming traffic rate and our hardware, hardware status. And we also manage, um, man, uh, measure the packet loss and calculate, calculate reward. So in this particular research problem, what we want to solve is we want to, use, we want to train the reinforcement learning model to learn like what's the least amount of, what's the fewest possible last level cache weight allocation to high priority applications that still satisfy the service level agreement at runtime. So here we showed our uh, reinforcement learning agent, the reward, how do we design the reward. 
So the reward actually reflects the goals of allocating the fewest amount of possible last level cache waste for the high priority application workload and also with the lowest possible packet loss because in the networking domain we want to maintain the low packet loss. We don't want to affect the service level agreement uh, for our high priority VNFs. So we have two parts for our reward functions. The first one is the reward for packet loss. So our packet loss is like a reflection on the reward for the packet loss. If we detected the packet loss for the current time window is smaller than threshold, this threshold can, be, can either be the zero packet loss or some low packet loss that is acceptable in the particular use case. So this is predefined by the customers. So if we detected our packet loss is smaller than this predefined threshold, we will assign a positive reward um, to this packet loss. However, if we detect our packet loss is greater than the threshold, we will assign a negative reward as accurate as that's a penalty to, the, to feedback to the system. And we also have another part reward for our RDT, um, which is our RDT here. So similarly, as I mentioned, we want to utilize the uh, least amount of uh, last level cache uh, to, to still satisfy the service level agreement. Uh, if we accurately detect the packet rate, a uh, packet drop rate is uh, smaller than the threshold, uh, we assign uh, higher reward for the la to for using less uh, less level cache weight allocation for the high priority applications, that is uh, we ac actually want to um, adjust the way we use minimal amount of less level cache uh, to achieve the service level agreement. Uh, if you use less and you still like there is like a very low packet loss or zero packet loss, we give like a higher reward. Uh, and if we detected the packet loss. And uh, then that may indicate our current RDT allocation not enough to processing the incoming traffic. In this scenario, we actually assign higher reward for using more cache ways for the high priority applications so that we can maintain the performance for our high priority workload. And our total reward is the sum of our packet loss reward and RDT reward which actually balance the traffic, the, the performance for high priority, as well as the uh, RDT resource uh, usage. So next, uh, I, uh, I have introduced like uh, the Intel RDT technology, how we design and build our closed loop automation for dynamic RDT allocation. Next, I will show our research proof of contact uh, a concept. So um, in our experiment setup, uh, we, uh, we actually uh, inject a, a network traffic to mimic a 24-hour uh, network traffic patterns. And uh, we run IPv4 forwarding from DPDK, which is like uh, um, forwarding the network traffic uh, for network processing as our high priority VNFs. And uh, we run the OMNET PP from spec 2006 as our best effort workload. Uh, we actually running this uh, experiment uh, in our Intel uh, Skylake server platform. Um, there are totally 11 uh, last level cache ways in the Skylake server platform. And uh, we have our baseline static resource allocation, that is we don't dynamically adjust the RDT allocation. How should we um, assign the, the RDT for high priority applications. In this particular case, we assign nine cache ways for the high priority VNFs, and the, the remaining two ways are allocated to the best effort workloads. We build our, uh, our test system for our closed loop uh, uh, automation to dynamically allocate our Intel RDT resource allocations. Uh, and uh, here, as we show, we have high priority WinF workload as IPv4 forwarding, and we have no Omni PP from the spec 2006. And uh, our telemetry selection tool, we use the CollectD uh, open source uh, daemon, 
And the monitoring, we use Grafana, so we can um, monitor the traffic load, the, the, the hardware metrics. And uh, for storage, uh, we use Influx DB database as the time series storage. So we periodically collect the, 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 the uh, platform telemetry, application telemetry, and uh, fed into the Influx DB. And uh, um, the all reinforcement learning agent periodically um, get the data from the database in FlaxDB and uh, um, uh, making the decisions for RDT allocation at runtime. So we build these closed close loop systems and uh, we use this closed system to let the reinforcement learning algorithm to learn what's the best action to take at each like time point uh, so that um, in longer term we have lower uh, we have like a satisfied our service level agreement for high priority workload. Still, but we can our goal is also meanwhile improving the performance for our best effort workload. So this is uh, our experiment results. Uh, um, the figure on the top left shows our in injected uh, traffic pattern to mimic a 24-hour networking traffic. Uh, and uh, we, do exper uh, we do comparison in three scenarios. Uh, so the figures on the bottom actually shows our best effort performance. Uh, um, the left one shows the, our baseline, sta baseline static allocation. We can see in baseline static allocation, the performance at runtime for our best effort workload actually is the lowest because it has very few uh, RDT results allocated to it. And the figure on the middle actually shows our, um, our RDT allocation policy that is trained and uh, through our reinforcement learning algorithms. Actually, we can see um, when, when the system detected the incoming network traffic is low from there, and actually it's allocated more RDT results for, um, for the um, best effort workload. That means it's, it's, it's using less RDT for our high priority IPv4 forwarding so that uh, the um, best effort workload can be benefited from uh, having more shared resources. However, when, when the traffic started to going up, the, the reinforcement learning agent learns that, that we should allocate more RDT because the incoming traffic is getting more and more. And then it learns to um, allocate uh, more RDT results for our high priority VNFs uh, to maintain its per, uh, service level agreement. So as a result, we can see our uh, at runtime or best effort workload performance is get, being dropped as expected. And then later on, when the, the agent actually learns when the tra incoming network traffic started to coming down, we actually, um, the, it learns automatically to allocate uh, more resource for the best effort workload and allocate less uh, RDT resource for our IPv4 forwarding high priority workload. So with, with our uh, reinforcement learning uh, learned policy, it actually helps uh, for this dynamic RDT allocation. It helps re re improve the best effort performance by 37%. And also, meanwhile, the packet jobs uh, for high priority WinF remains uh, in the similar range as uh, in our baseline static uh, resource allocation. And uh, actually, we also derived the Oracle policy that we did uh, intensive offline analysis to, to see at, like at each point what is the RDT allocation we should set. And uh, the figure on the right shows uh, the Oracle dynamic RDT allocation policy. We can see our, our like reinforcement learning algorithm and did a very excellent job in learning like when to allocate how much RDT resource allocation at runtime and uh, um, provide a very close uh, performance uh, compared to the Oracle policies. So this work actually we, uh, we prove that uh, like uh, with reinforcement learning algorithm and uh, to be built into the closed loop automation, it is very powerful and uh, effective in finding the optimal RDT allocation between multiple workloads and help improving the server utilization. 
So in summary, so we build a closed loop system to dynamically learn and tune the RDT results allocation at runtime using the reinforcement learning methodologies. And our, um, our, our research work uh, um, like build on the Intel, we have the Clark D, the whole closed loop automation at Sunku and uh, Emma and uh, Tong has been presented previously, we build on that type of framework. And our focus is on the AI analytics and uh, how can we utilize reinforcement learning and to solve the real world uh, complex uh, problem instead of uh, like a human have to manually tune those policies, how can we by trial and error learn those policies uh, um, by s through self-learning. And we actually demonstrated uh, the reinforcement learning algorithm is very effective in handling such kind of uh, complex uh, jobs. Um, going forward, uh, we will continue exploring various reinforcement learning algorithms, primarily balancing the sample efficiency as well as computation complexity in more complex systems. We also want to research in how do we do the online uh, model update to track, to continue tracking the changing traffic as well as uh, um, uh, the operating environment sometimes can be changed. Uh, that's also some research we, would like, we will continue forwarding. And uh, we, uh, we also want to integrate our uh, methodology into the orchestration to help dynamically allocate the um, hardware resource on the platform and uh, further improve server utilization for, for our customers. So yes, the Intel disclaimer has the standard uh, format. And uh, I think that's uh, um, all about my, my research work at Intel Labs.